All right, what is your first name? Kathy. And where do you live? I live in Overland Park, Kansas. And do you have a personal story about how heart disease has touched your life? Um, well, I guess it's recently touching. I've been diagnosed with aortic stenosis, and it's a congenital heart decision. I have two leaflets rather than the normal three. So over the years, there's an accumulation, and so I'm going to be having valve replacement at some point in time. My so, cardiologist has told me. Okay, so you say it's an accumulation, so is this the first... I mean, like little things have been happening your whole life? You kind of had a clue you had a problem? No, or? I had no clue. <laughs> I, I was diagnosed with um, anemia, and so then they thought, well, I needed iron. Well, I take the iron, and then my internist told me, well, I think you, we don't want to get too much, so I stopped taking it, and then my iron level, I went back into anemia again. And then, so <laughs> then I went to the cardiologist, and I said, I'm getting so short of breath, that was my first indication. And they thought, well, it's the anemia that do, does it. And so I had a stress echocardiogram, and that's when they discovered the stenosis in my, and then they said, well, you only have two leaflets instead of three. And I said, really? So it's a congenital defect, but it had not impacted me until just within the past year, I'd say. So what was your state of mind when you heard I was terrified <laughs> because my mother had had her heart valve replaced when she was a little younger than me. And she had thought because she thought she maybe had rheumatic fever when she was a child. And so they thought maybe that was it. But I think it's possible that she had the same thing that I do. Do you have children? No, not biological. I have two stepdaughters. Okay. Like when you start thinking, maybe there's a family history, do you start worrying about other family members? Well, I started worrying about, I do have a brother, and he is four years older than I, and he just had, <laughs> he went through, um, well, I start over again, he just had a, um, uh, what do they call it, when they, they did the um, cardiac cath. Oh, and so they did a cardiac cath on him because they thought, and they said he had some stenosis, but he has three leaflets, so he's good. <laughs> I mean, it, there's a little bit. They said nothing that he's, at that point, he needs anything done. Did you sit down, though, and start comparing stories and think, wow, we actually have some kind of a family history and never even knew? Well, that's exactly. If my mother only had two leaflets, that was never revealed that that was the case. And so that would have been in the early 80s, 1980s, when she had that done. And I, they might have told her I wasn't there during the surgery and I, because she lived out of, in Iowa and I wasn't there for the surgery. She recovered with me when we lived in um, St. Louis, but I didn't know. And so when this happened, she and I have moles, well, she's deceased, but she and I have moles in the same place. And so I'm thinking it probably is something that maybe she might have had as well. So you said you're getting ready to have a procedure? Um, <clears throat> I hope not. I'm going back to see my cardiologist on Monday. I just had another echocardiogram done a week and a half ago. And so he's going to, all the blood work and stuff that I've had done recently, and then we'll decide. He's hoping I can delay a little bit longer because they're making such progress that some of them they're starting to do um, – I, I don't know, they go through the with a catheter rather than having to, which terrifies me about having my chest cut open. And so um, anyway, so I'm kind of early in this. and But um, I've decided that people don't understand when you're dealing with your heart. It's pretty terrifying. And every time I lay in bed, if I get short of breath or because that's one of my major conditions is when you walk across the room, even going to the bathroom, and then you get back in bed, you're kind of like... And so you're wondering, okay, is this normal or is this something I should be worrying about? So, What was the conversation like with your husband after you were diagnosed? He's not a worrier like I am. And um, he, he's um, understanding, but I think he thinks I'm going to keep going on. It's not going to be a big deal. And so he's not worrying about it until we talk to Dr. Thompson and see what he thinks about how much longer we can wait and all of that. I'm just tired of being out of breath. <laughs> so, What is your biggest worry? Um, well, uh, um, 
I know that there will be capable surgeons, and I know this is a very routine thing. Dr. Thompson said it's 99%. My mother had it done, gosh, it would be probably about 40 years ago, I guess. That'd be about right. And um, she is was fine, and she was on Coumadin, and, and so it, it works, but it's just a little... Um, it, it's a little unnerving, I guess. Yeah. So, other than just kind of waiting and going through the process right mm -hmm. now, how has heart disease changed your life? Are you, what are you more aware of on a daily basis? I think one thing is I'm fearful that I'm going to have a heart attack, <laughs> that I'm not going to get this done in enough time. And I probably need to ask him that question. Is, is this going to be something that is going to cause me to have a heart attack? Because if I get, um, if I get discomfort, well, I also have stomach issues. And so um, I take medication for that. And so it could be that. And so everything is like closely. And I have a hernia there too which I know nobody needs to know that. But for me, just, I mean, I'm, I'm never sure which, which part of this is, is acting up. So, yeah. Have you made other changes just to your, your, the way you eat or the way you exercise? <clears throat> I need to. <laughs> and I keep saying I'm going to start walking. And the problem is when I start walking, then I almost get to the point of hyperventilating, and then it scares me. So I slow down. And um, right now I feel like I'm in a race to get – we're – doing some remodeling and um, I feel like I'm in a race to try and get everything ready at the house so I, it's not like I'm sitting around wondering oh this is bad I'm just trying to get things in in order and uh, you know and I've tried to talk to my husband about you know we should have conversation about what if I get critically ill and what should we do and he's like you're always talking about dying you're not gonna die <laughs> and so he won't he won't participate in that conversation so anyway, that's, sometimes it feels a little lonely and I don't want to, I don't want to be like, okay, all I talk about is me and my heart disease. And so, um, I think it's one of those things. It feels a little lonely. I think that's, that really is a big part of the Go Red for Women campaign is that it's not talked about as much. People think that breast cancer is the number one killer of women and it's not, it's heart disease. So mm -hmm. now that you're going through this process and you know how lonely it can be, how do you feel about the future and just getting the message out to other women? <clears throat> um, you know, not and not very many women. Um, when I went to, uh, just a few weeks ago, I went to a Women Heart meeting, and this is the first group that I knew about where women talk about heart disease or have heart disease. And in that room, I was one of two women out of 15 that had you know, the kind of problem that I have. Most everybody has heart attacks. So um, it's kind of interesting. There's really not a lot of information out there that I have found. And um, so, you know, I've, I've read about, you know, what is involved in having, you know, valve replacement surgery and um, on the internet. And um, so I'm, I'm just kind of trying to gather information. And I've also learned, um, I'm kind of in denial about it. I think that's another thing. So how do you think that you can get your story and your truth to other women? How, how would you plan on sharing your experience? Um, I, <laughs> to be honest, I really am not sure how to proceed doing that because um, nobody, um, I shouldn't say nobody, um, I'm not sure people are <laughs> real receptive. And I think if it's a congenital disease, it's a different kind of thing. I don't think that lifestyle changes are exactly as impactful for that. I, I mean, if you're born with only two leaflets instead of three, um, then, and so what Dr. Thompson said is he thinks that the platelets are being beaten up and that's why I go into anemia without iron. Because he said you shouldn't have to take iron. That That is not a normal <laughs> thing that you should have to do that. So getting my message out to other women, I'm not really sure about how to do that. Do you think like, have you always had regular checkups? Is there a way you think you could have been diagnosed earlier, or you, you did everything right? Um, I, I don't think so. Um, I had a mild heart murmur two years ago, um, three years ago, I think it was, and it's gotten more um, pronounced, I guess. So it must get larger as your heart works harder. I, I'm not exactly sure how that works, but um, so... When I went to an excellent internist, and she said, well, let's just check this out, and let's see what's going on. And she said, 
don't get on the internet and be looking for a name for this. She said, until we get a diagnosis, let's, the results of your test, let's see what. And so that was when, you know, she said, well, I think we need to get you to a cardiologist. And so that's what I did. So what is your number one focus right now, since you're, you're really going through the whole situation? Um, I'm trying to get to acceptance that this is actually happening. And um, I'm trying to get educate, more education about what do I need to do and how can I prepare. And I'm also trying to think about, you know, when your heart is on a heart-lung machine, you, you hope everything's going to go right when they pull the switch and then you go back again. And so um, I'm trying to get things in order a little bit, I guess. Okay. That's kind of a little scary to think about. <laughs> It's a whole lot scary, yeah, and and I'm not I'm not afraid. I mean, if if this is my time, I've had a wonderful life and lived to see three grandchildren, and so I'm happy with that. And I've had a great life, and and uh, it's not it's not fear of dying. It's just the unknown. Trying to come to acceptance with that, I guess. Well, gosh, I hope you, everything is going to go well for you. You have such a positive attitude. How do you stay so positive? Um. Well, I have a I have a great faith, and um, and and I do have wonderful family, and they will listen to me if I talk about it. I just don't want to be consuming people with whining about oh poor me, because <laughs> I don't really feel like oh poor me. You know, I I really don't. I mean, there is a process, and there's a procedure, and um, hopefully, if all things go well, then I'll be I'll be functioning for another hopefully 10, 20, 30 years from now. But um, it, it's not that. It's just, um, it's just a little not having um, control of what's going to happen and not knowing exactly when things are going to happen. I'm a planner, and I did that in my job. And so, um, you know, I was used to being able to lay things out. And not being having that specific kind of a lineup out there is just a little bit kind of uh, freewheeling. Yeah. yeah. I'm Kathy, and I go red for my family and for me. I want to uncover the truth about heart disease because I think it's really important uh, for me and for my children and my niece and my nephew. My grandchildren are why. They're my joy and my bliss.